Outside the city is a smallish airport where the real journey begins. A graveyard of old aircraft outside the hangars is an ominous sign. Luckily our transport is in much better condition, though quite small. In addition to the passengers and luggage will be some supplies for the remote jungle lodge two hours away. Prosperous, my friend. Uh, too prosperous. That's all right. Okay. Good for Okay. See you around. Gracias. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. We're about to head off into the jungles of Bolivia to. What are we doing? Drinking. Drinking. Soy sauce. Lovely. Daño Negro. If you want to locate the Caño Negro on the map, then you'll need to find a spot in the middle of nowhere. Go left a bit, and when you find yourself completely lost, you'll know you've arrived. Upon our arrival, the plane is greeted by a substantial welcoming party and the luggage loaded into carts, at which point we march off into the forest to the lodge, situated on the banks of the Caño Negro River. Oh, watch the step. Find the step. Too many roots. Our host Memo in the yellow shirt directs guests to their respective accommodations. Once again, Paul and myself find ourselves in luxurious accommodations in the middle of nowhere. What can I say? One of us is definitely messier than the other. All participants have gathered outside the bar to pre-prepare the equipment needed for the week ahead. A local expert inspects each individual's collection of flies and lures to ascertain their effectiveness and offer advice. We have like 120 kilometers of rivers for our own exclusive use. The fish have teeth out here and the lodge stocks a good supply of spare lures for obvious reasons. With an afternoon excursion planned, it's important everyone be well nourished with a little lunch. The destination is upstream on the Caño Negro to a series of channels and lakes. We've got weed beds coming up. Someone will be home there. Nothing wrong with the casting though. No, no. Casting's good. Yeah, yeah, no, no. The dark waters of these Amazonian rivers are rough neighbourhoods. And one particular thuggish fish, adorned in bright colours, has a liking for the heavy bush and weeds along the banks. A prime location to conduct the shady business of ambushing the innocent that pass by. But today they must be on guard as Pescador Paul prepares to dupe them with some fluffy fabric wrapped around a hook 
Manuel and Fabio quietly propel their vessel close to the edge, giving the hunter an opportunity to place that fake minnow into the strike zone. First catch of the trip is a chunky peacock bass. Despite the name, these aggressive fish are cichlids and not closely related to the true bass found in North America. These creatures grow big and fight hard. And although they can be caught nearly anywhere in these large tropical rivers, they definitely have a preference for structure and cover. Gracias. All right. One down. 99 to go. Let's see that one. Wow, that's a good one. It appears our activities have attracted the attention of some local scallywags. As the next fish takes the fly, the river dolphins move in to steal the booty. Poles forced to let the line go slack, giving the fish a chance to evade its attackers. Did you get that? We better go. We better leave this place here. Oh, back out there again. After a frantic battle, the fish is landed, though not without injury. Both sides of the body scarred by the sharp teeth of the dolphins. Surprisingly, the bass shows signs of life, and as it swims away, the dolphins likewise move on to fishier pasture. After a busy afternoon on the river, all participants reconvene back at base to swap stories of the day's events. Paul's a proven veteran appearing in the guest book with pictures and a hand-scrawled note of appreciation. His nephew Scott also appearing in this hefty tome. After some drinks and hors d'oeuvres comes a call to adjourn for dinner. The thatch roof of the main building is reinforced with tarps and the water tank to the left is supplied by a well with drinking water going through a number of filters. Power comes from a generator inside this rickety shack that runs till about 11pm. Numerous other buildings exist for staff quarters, boat repairs and gear storage. This riverside location can become inundated in the wet season and except for a small skeleton crew remaining to look over things, it's otherwise abandoned until the rain stops and the water levels subside. Then the cleanup begins prior to the next season of fishermen. Although the human population is fluid, there are a number of year-round residents such as the Karakara and the Black Vulture. A pair of Orinoco geese take a romantic stroll along the swampy shoreline. The southern lapwing is quite confrontational and also very noisy. Notice the spiky spurs located on the bird's shoulder, used for battle. 
Nobody messes with Chief Security Guard known as Hefe, the boss, or sometimes Gorda, the fat boy, or even just Gary. The dark, tannin-laden waters of the Cano Negro flow into the San Simon River that runs swifter than its tributary, its turbid waters opening up even more fishing opportunities. Our guide Tonyo is an accomplished fly fisherman in his own right, eyeing a drop off at the end of the sandbar to try his luck. The shallow sandy terrain created by the sandbars gives access to a number of new species. One of them is the chunky corvina, or silver croaker, a freshwater relative of the North American redfish. Another is the cerubi, a very attractive member of the catfish family. So that fish Bob caught reminds me of a, a mulloway or a dewfish that we see out in the salt water in Western Australia, but of course it was not. Kayama? Kev Suruvi. Suruvi. Another fish prolific throughout all river habitats is the infamous piranha. 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 Too far out to return to the lodge, all boats converge to a specific point along the river for lunch and an afternoon siesta. Siesta time, Paul. Siesta, you bet. And how's your day going so far? Good. All the better now that I'm in the sack. Not all the Tucanari caught are released. These prized specimens have been held in reserve to feed the troops. A local lizard is well aware of the routine and lurks close by in the hope of getting some guts and cast offs. As lunch slowly roasts over the fire, Forest residents drift by to oversee what all the fuss is about, such as the Oropendula and the black-fronted Nunbird. Capybaras stay away at a respectable distance in case they end up on the grill.
Piranha in these waterways are a constant menace. Two piranhas on the one hook. I'm the piranha catching king. Now that's pretty tough talk you just heard, but you'd see a very cowardly side of me if I ended up in the drink with a piranha catfish and caiman. So this is only my third day out here and already my fly box has turned into a graveyard for destroyed and devastated flies mainly through the, the help of the piranha. Oh, bien, okay. Tres kilo. Tres kilos. Tres. Okay. One, two, three. Offshoots from the main river lead to slack water swamps, good for wildlife and other types of fish. In the swampy shallows, Tonyo resorts to a less technical style of fishing, yielding much better results than either I or Bob. Black skimmers nest in the sandbars in the river, laying their blotched eggs in shallow depressions, regarded as a delicacy by the local Itonoma people. The skimmers also have to compete for space with raucous terms. Mm-hmm. 
I may appear a little heavily dressed for the occasion, but the temperatures are down to about 50 degrees in the mornings. Most unexpected. This morning's plan is for our little armada of vessels to make our way upriver to where Bolivia's border with Brazil. The intention is to catch Payara and as many peacock bass as we can get into. Leaving the Caño Negro, we are in for a lengthy ride, following the San Simón River to reach its confluence with the Rio Guapo. Large Cayman get a little concerned as the boats pass by, slinking away into the murky depths. Related to alligators, the potentially dangerous Black Cayman is the largest found in South America, growing up to five metres or more. Although it's a hefty beast, there are two species of true crocodile found farther north on the continent that grow even bigger. Panicked Watson, fussing in the trees along the river, watch us power past with extreme suspicion. Lurking in the undergrowth are stunning capped herons and majestic jabaroos stalking the shoreline. Cranky great blue herons launch from their favourite fishing spots flying to safety. Some of their smaller cousins such as the boat build and night skulk amongst the foliage. While the Amazon kingfisher keeps vigilant from the cover of the bush, a black collared hawk screeches its disapproval. belongs to Jose the rancher and he's in Bolivia. These trees we're looking at is Brazil and the river is the, what river is it? What river? The Kenyans, that's the, the, uh, Brazil, the Bolivian's name. The Brazilians call it the Guayapo. Yeah. Two names. That's what it is. The man in the middle is Jose the rancher, who runs the cattle out here in the middle of nowhere. In contrast to the off-grid living is that satellite dish to stay up to date with all the latest soap operas. Alessandro. Que es esta? Que es esta? Tortuga. Tortuga. I have no more. Go back there. I'm okay. Tag looking forward to your turtle? Yeah, absolutely. I've had it before, and I think when we were here before with Scott, uh, I think we had a little monkey meat along with it. I had it a little bit before. Oh. I wouldn't recognize it. Most things, this tastes like beef instead of chicken. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I'm mm -hmm. eating turtle or not, but it tastes like beef. Mm -hmm. Watching a Brazilian party boat making its way downriver, I notice a turtle roped to a log 
no doubt staying fresh until the next stew gets underway. After a nourishing dish of gravy turtle, we resume our quest for the pesca. Out here in the wilds, it is imperative to always be aware of all dimensions of one's surroundings. The last place a man would want to be is under a tree full of frightened cormorants. The land surrounding the lodge is the Itenyes National Forest Reserve, belonging to the Atonoma people, who work in conjunction with the owners, supplying a workforce of guides, kitchen staff, cleaners and maintenance workers operating in shifts, supplying the local people with a good supply of seasonal income. Okay. This final morning, Paul and I embark on a special mission, upstream on the Caño Negro, to visit a lake cut off from the main channel once the water level recedes. This morning we're, uh, we're here, I don't know exactly the name of the uh, lake that we're going to, but uh, we're going to be fishing stri strictly peacock bass and in some homemade uh, boats that I guess were built out on this particular pond because there would be no way that they'd be able to haul them. It's a half hour walk back through the jungle. And uh, anyway, we're off to fish for the peacocks all day long. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, there's no, 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 no ripe, no, Está. no bueno. Está verde, está ahí. Sí. Veinte, treinta sí. personas. Trece? Treinta. Treinta? Sí. Wow. Thirty people out here harvesting them on the ground. They, they're out here harvesting. They're, they're part of the group that mm -hmm. uh, comes out here and does the harvesting of the nut. They're good. I think they were made out here. It looks that way. Mejor que el motor, no? Huh? Mejor que. Oh, yeah. That's your motor. Mejor que el motor.
The two canari living in this lake may not grow as big as their main channel brothers, but they are voracious and ready to bite at anything. The pristine wilderness around the Cano Negro and San Simon rivers provide a truly awe-inspiring experience with great fishing and brilliant wildlife viewing. A wondrous week immersed in the natural world on one of the many tributaries of the Amazon. Special thanks must go to our guides for their expertise and enthusiasm. Also to our camp manager Memo for his unparalleled skills running a smooth operation at the edge of the world. There is a good reason folk return time and time again to the Cano Negro to build on priceless memories deep in the jungles of Bolivia. <laughs>